Well, hello there, and welcome to the video. I just got done watching Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 5. I thought the last episode was tough to get through. Yeah, this one was a lot tougher to get through. So before I get into the video, you're going to get some spoilers. This is your spoiler warning for this episode. So if you haven't seen the episode, I, I just wouldn't anyway, because this was painful to get through. I'll go into a bit more detail about what happens in this episode, but I'm, I'm not going to, you know, do a blow by blow because there would be no point. It's going to be a little bit of an angry video, I think. The basic plot rundown of this episode is that the Enterprise is on its way to Vulcan and it's not terribly clear about where it is and I'll get into that later but it's on its way to Vulcan and it's got a mission to survey the Kirkonians. Whilst there Spock gets turned into a human by interdimensional beings in a whirly spatial distortion that's on one of the moons of the Kirkonian system <laughs> and the Kirkonians um, thought they were fixing him because he's in a shuttle with Nurse Chapel and he, she's a human. He was injured in the shuttle because of a crash or something and he gets turned into a human because the Kirkonians would seem to be the interdimensional versions of uh, these guys. So he becomes human and it's really at the wrong time because he's got to have a meal with his future in-laws and, you know, he, be, otherwise they will basically call off the, his engagement to T'Pring and he won't be able uh, to get married to T'Pring if he doesn't make it through this ritual. And that's the basic plot for the episode. Yeah, I have serious problems with this episode and I'm not just... I'm not doing it to nitpick that I've written down all the points that I've, I thought of while I was watching the episode and it will seem like I'm nitpicking but I'm not just saying these things to nitpick. So some of the things I wrote down with this episode as uh, Pike is cooking again he seems to be spending more time in the goddamn kitchen than he does being a starship captain. There were some cheeky moments in this episode, some of which I did smirk, and 90% of them were Pike, because I actually like Pike as a character. Even this weird, contorted, twisted, strange new worlds version of Pike, I actually quite like, because Anson Mount has got some range. He's able to do stuff, he's able to act, and he is severely underutilised this season. Now Anson Mount's been away with family, so yes, I understand they couldn't write him into every episode and they couldn't give him a, a heavy amount to do. I get that. But he's cooking again and he he's like the chef of this dinner, seriously. There were several, I say several, that doesn't really do it justice. There were many, many, many cringeworthy moments in this episode, okay? And I did note some of them down when I heard them. There was some serious eye rolling going on and I was just, yeah, at the end of my fucking tether with this i really was we see sick bay we see chapel and and benga and we also see some medical staff there's more than there's just these two in the medical bay so sick bay is quite buzzing with activity at this point chapel and mbenga fist bump because chapel is preparing for her interview with the medical archaeology vulcan directorate thingamajig i don't even care at this point she's going off because it's too awkward for her to be around Spock so she's doing the old Charles Trick Tucker thing of transferring somewhere else because it's getting too difficult. There is a little callback to Enterprise or to a point in Enterprise that they made they use it quite heavily in this episode as Vulcans have a heightened sense of smell so humans are quite smelly to them. Spock as a Vulcan has triggers things that trigger him and his OCD so he doesn't like when Kirk not Kirk but Kirk leaves his pots out. He goes to put his pots away because uh, I, I assume it triggers some sort of OCD in the spot. Uh, and then he turns to the table and sees some crumbs on the table and brushes them off the table onto the floor. I know we all have varying levels of OCD, but that I found really mind blowing. And it was such a stupid little thing. <laughs> 
Oh, shit. So Spock has turned into a human after being near the whirly pool of stupidity. He wakes up in sick bay. Yeah, he, he becomes human uh, and turns to the mirror and says, what the... And then the credits roll. Credits of Star Trek. Strange new feelings, it would seem, because he spends most of the episode as a uh, petulant teenager, um, the hormonal, and with outbursts, uh, and just, God damn it, I can't even believe I'm breaking this down as much as I am. I'll get to the interdimensional... <laughs> Let's move away from Spock for a second and, and we'll talk about the interdimensional entities that are just, I think, the Kirkovians, original name. I think the Kirk Kirkovians became an enlightened interdimensional species and um, they are just immensely stupid and robotic and really, really fucking stupid. One's called Yellow. <laughs> And if that wasn't bad enough, <laughs> there's another one called Blue. <laughs> one's called Yellow, one's called Blue. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> so these interdimensional entities have not interacted with humans they make Spock human because they thought they should match. He should match Chapel. I'm surprised they didn't make him a woman. I'm so shocked they did not make him a woman at this point. <laughs> I am so shocked they didn't go down that route. It would have been hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so Spock has uh, Spock's a human. He has to get through this ritual. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of things that I'm going to say about this ritual. That I'm going to say something for an addendum if I've got time to do one. God, I hope I have time to do an addendum. So much in it. Um, <laughs> he comes in uh, to his mother. He comes in wearing a beanie. Uh, a, a, a beanie. A Starfleet beanie. And at that point, I was just thinking, merch. <laughs> Who doesn't have a Starfleet beanie? Spock has a Starfleet beanie. God, it's painful. Anyway, that's not really important. Part of this ritual that he's got to partake, this meal with his in-laws, is he, ha he has to pick up a scalding hot, scalding hot pot of tea or whatever it is. Hot water. It's scalding hot water. You, they, they wouldn't flinch. They'd just think, oh, you know, that's kind of hot. Um, I, 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 I've suppressed my emotions, so I can't show any pain, you know. So his mother does it, and she picks, as an example, she picks it up, and she says, you know, with resilience and training, and even humans can do it. It's like, I don't know whether you've ever touched a scalding kettle, but it tends to remove skin. I've, I, I suffered a, 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 a quite a horrific burn on my arm from a uh, industrial plastic fusion gun. And that took months to fully heal. And I was lucky. <laughs> I, and I remember as the gun brushed my arm, and it brushed it only for a split second, it removed skin. It removed skin from my arm. Uh, I will flash an image up if you're queasy or anything like that. Look away. But there it is. In, its, in all of its glory. That was a split second contact with an extremely hot fusion gun. Now, a scalding pot would rip your skin off. It would, it would, sorry, but it would. It would be so agonizingly painful. Even if you could bear the pain and not flinch, it would remove skin from your hands. But they're just, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. It's a new trek. Rules don't matter. It's fine. Whatever. And there's another scene, and I'm not joking. Ortega's Una, La'an, and Uhura all explaining. I've put here woman splaining. 
I'll keep getting into trouble for that. But they're all explaining to Vok how to be a Vulcan. Now, if, if, if Spock's been turned into a human, he remembers how to be a Vulcan. He must remember how to be a Vulcan. He remembers how to be a Vulcan, but he's got four of the female officers explaining to him how to be a Vulcan. Like he's got no memory of how to do it. Jesus Christ, what is happening? What is this? I, I know that they probably intended it to be a little bit of a fun episode with a, with a heartwarming story about true love or whatever the fuck they're trying to say. But this is Star Trek. This isn't a kid's show. This isn't... This isn't... This is not written by people with mature minds. This is written by children. I'm going to get a few comments in the comment section saying, My God, calm down, man. Calm down. But... This this review is at my outlet, so I'm having a bit of an outlet. There are some frustrations that I had with this episode. I'm fine. I'm not going to have a heart attack. I'm not going to die or anything like that. And my blood pressure is absolutely fine. But this show is 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 shit. It's shit. My wife uh, came came up uh, stairs and and I was I was uh, sort of halfway through the episode. She came upstairs to sort of lay down and she, even she was going, "What? What? What?" She's not a Trekkie. She watches Star Trek with me, but she's not a Trekkie. She's not into it as much as I am. Even she was going, "What? What?" Uh, Nurse Chapel is very, very, very. It's insinuated. Uh, quite heavily, that Mbenga is just not as good as Nurse Chapel. He's the doctor of the ship, but Nurse Chapel is the, the, the expert, and she's trying to find a cure for Spock. And Mbenga's just standing here going, I think I'm going to let you do it. Uh, it's not up to me, it's up to you. You're, you're, the, you're the best! Oh, my God. I, I'm going to get on to uh, Vulcans in, in this show, in New Trek. Vulcans in New Trek. They are far too much like humans. The actors can't act Vulcan. To bring, ah, oh, she expresses dissatisfaction with a. Oh. Seriously, there's a moment in the episode where she just goes, oh. to Pring's father, full Vulcan, and does not act like a Vulcan. There's emotion there. There's emotion on display. It is not subtle. It's oh, mm, this is delicious. But he's eating food that Pike prepared. He's literally saying, mmm, this is delicious. They're not Vulcans. This show is shit. <laughs> I'm laughing about it, but it's so tragic. It really is. The actors don't know how to act Vulcan. The writers don't know how to write Vulcan. Jesus Christ, the amount of slip-ups in this episode where, where they're showing emotion. It's like, you are not playing a human. You're playing a Vulcan. You look at Tuvok, I'll give you a modern, more modern example. Tuvok, the, Tim Russ played Tuvok straight. And there was an episode where, tu a, a Voyager, which I thought was fantastic, where Tuvok lost his ability to suppress his emotions. And he returned to almost like a child. Like, but there was something more powerful about, what he, about his performance. Ethan Peck in this acts like just an absolute arse. Just like the worst kind of teenager. Tuvok, when he lost his ability to uh, suppress his emotions, I think he had some kind of memory fog as well. So he didn't remember much about uh, being Vulcan. He didn't remember who he was. I think it was total memory loss, actually. I'm not sure. There was still hints of Tuvok in there. But this was just insane. Chapel decides to take Ortegas and Uhura on a little adventure to try and get this interdimensional species to fix Spock. Ortegas is there. Ortegas flies the ship, by the way. In case you didn't know, Ortegas flies the ship. So she's flying the shuttle. And they do this uh, manoeuvre into the big swirly spatial distortion thingamajig. And they go into interdimensional space. And this is where we meet Yellow and Blue. <laughs> Yellow isn't there right now. But this interdimensional species is like a goddamn customer service hotline. They're the goddamn customer service hotline. They, they treat the new away team like they're a dissatisfied customers. 
And they've said, basically, your returns policy isn't valid because you've waited too long. We've, we've fixed Spock and you waited too long to complain, so it's highly irregular. They are like customer service from a goddamn company. Oh, my God, this was fucking atrocious. Oh my god. At one point, and this is why I said at the beginning of the review, it's not clear where the Enterprise is at this point because apparently the Enterprise is a light year out. So they're, they've gone off on this little excursion. I can assume the Enterprise has gone uh, headed straight to Vulcan and the shuttle has gone for a little excursion. The shuttle crashed, but the Enterprise rescued them and then carried on to Vulcan. And then Chapel takes the shuttle back to the moon in the star system and that's where the light year the beyond the light year is i, I don't know uh, it was really hard to keep track of the interdimensional species they won't fix spot because they don't understand that chapels just wants to save her friend and they all about saving spock saving spock spock's been turned into human he's not going to die it just means that if he's not fixed in time he's going to stay human they won't fix Spock or give Chapel the means to fix Spock until she tells them more about the relationship and Ortegas and Ahura are like come on we you love him we know you love him so Chapel has to explain and then she goes back to Spock and injects him and they, she says the genome will take effect almost immediately so this hyperspray she gives him will fix the genome almost immediately but the physical features won't return for Spock until a few hours later. So Spock's made it through this um, this meal. There were a few again quite funny moments with Pike. Anson Mount, oh, he, he nailed it in this, this, this episode because he was the comic relief but he nailed it as the comic relief not as the captain of a starship. I said in my addendum la last week that this show is getting hard to watch. And this episode really compounded that problem. Now, I've had some people say, don't don't review this anymore. Make yourself happy. Go and review some uh, regular Star Trek. But I've got to make it through this, this, this season. And then... I've got an even bigger hurdle to get across, uh, get over, and that that's that's discovery when that comes up, because we know that's going to be terrible as well. This this show is shocking. This episode, I think it had real potential and it squandered it. It's once again proving that this show is written by people who don't know Star Trek, don't like Star Trek, and hate you and your intelligence. They do. They think you're children. They think that. People who like Star Trek go to conventions and live in their parents' basements. That's not what we are. It's never what we've been. We're intelligent people. Stop talking and treating us like children. Maybe this, this episode was some kind of um, metaphor for how they view Trekkies as, as Spock played out. Quite honestly, this show is bloody insulting to Star Trek fans, in my opinion. And I am so, so over New Trek. Star Trek used to have fun. Everybody knew their job. All the actors knew their job. All the actors knew their characters. Michael Dawn knew Worf. He would even interject and say, Worf wouldn't say that. Worf would say this. They, they cared about the characters. They knew the characters. This total bunch of numpties do not know the characters. Anson Mount is probably the best thing in this show. It's shameful. It's shocking. That was a hell of a, a, of a terrible episode. Some people will like it because some people like the goofiness. You know, the actors goofing around, acting out of character and, you know, Ethan Peck act, act, acting as anti-Spock as possible. But the, all the subtle hints and nods in this episode was, it was just, it was, it was insulting. I'm insulted. And maybe I'm taking it a little bit too seriously. But I love Star Trek. And this is not Star Trek. It's been hijacked. And it's been twisted into something it's not. 
those are my thoughts on the episode. In some ways, I feel that this review has reverted back to the early days of Danger Mouse, <laughs> where I'm just angry. Hysterically so as well. <laughs> but anyway, those are my thoughts on this episode. As garbled and as munched up as they were, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I welcome anyone to this channel. I love you all. I love everyone who hits that subscribe button. If you watch the videos, decide it's not your cup of tea, Thanks for watching and thanks for sticking with me. I will try and get an addendum done this weekend. There is a hell of a lot to cover. It might be a very long addendum, but I've got less time this weekend to do a video. So uh, that one may have to wait. But as usual, if you are new here and you like this kind of content, you know, a rambling idiot on YouTube, then please hit that subscribe button, help the channel to grow and hit the like button on the video as well that helps the algorithm don't forget to leave a comment and i will see you if i make it that long i will see you in the next video until then you look after yourselves you look after one another take care bye bye for now